Up to now we've seen how we can apply aggregations to entire tables, yielding a single result row. But often we want something different. For instance, we might want to have the total number of homework points for each student. Then we want to have more rows in the output table. We want one row for each student. In SQL, this can be done using group by. Group by allows us to partition the table into groups and then we can apply aggregation functions for each of the groups. SQL also offers a having clause. This is similar to the where clause, but the where clause applies to single rows, whereas the having clause applies to entire groups. The group by clause in SQL partitions the table into disjoint groups based on the value equality for the group by attributes. In this example, the group by attribute, there's only one attribute, number. So the table is partitioned into groups based on the equality of the attribute number. Here we're looking at the results table and we're looking at homework results. So the homework results will be partitioned into groups. And you see the result of this partitioning at the bottom here. There's two groups, namely one group for number one and one group for homework number two. And now the aggregation functions are applied for each group separately. So we are now computing the average number of points. This will be applied to the average number of points for the first group, giving us eight, and the average number of points for the second group, giving us 8.5. Also, now that we are forming groups based on attribute values, so in each group, all the rows have the same value number. Therefore, we are now allowed to use this group by attributes in the select clause. All the rows in one group have the same number. So it's clear what number we are referring to here. The groups are formed after the evaluation of the from and the where clause. So first the rows are filtered using the condition the where clause, and then the groups are formed on the set of the remaining rows. The aggregation is then applied to each group separately. The result is one row for each group. The group by never produces empty groups. And as we have mentioned before, since the group by attributes have a unique value for each group, we are now allowed to use group by attributes in the select clause. It's still illegal to reference any other attribute. Let's have a look at an example. Here we are grouping by the number of the homework exercise. We are only looking at homework exercises and we are grouping them by the number. Now in the select clause we are allowed to use e.number because this attribute has a unique value for each group. However, the reference to the topic of the homework here is illegal. This is not the group by attribute and it is also not an aggregation function. Note that we are only looking at homework exercises. So the number of the homework uniquely determines the topic. If I tell you that we are looking at homework 2, you know exactly know what topic we are talking about. So in principle, the topic is unique for each group. However, SQL cannot check this syntactically from this query. So to give SQL a hint, we have to include the topic also in the attributes of the group by, even though this will not change the groups. This being said, there are some database management systems that will accept this query. However, this is not allowed by standard in the SQL standard. So it's better to include the topic in the group by. 
The SQL query on the last slide can be repaired, can be turned into legal SQL by adding either topic in the group by attributes. So the groups are now formed by equality on the number and the topic. To be more precise, two rows are now in the same group if they have the same value for either number and for either topic. And otherwise, they are in different groups. So now the database management system has a syntactic clue that either topic has a unique value for each group, so we are allowed to refer to either topic in the select clause. And the query gives us the desired result. We will get the average points for each homework topic. The order of the group by attributes is not important. So we could equally have written group by e dot topic and then e dot number. Is there a semantical difference between these two queries? So can they produce a different output? First of all, let's try to understand what these queries do. We are querying the exercises and the results table. We are looking only at homework exercises and homework results. And we require as a join condition that the number of the exercise matches the number of the result. So basically we have a join of the exercises in the results table and we restrict to homework results. Then we partition the table into groups and these groups are formed based on the topic. Then for each group we include in the output the topic and the average of the points divided by the maximum number of points that could be obtained. So dividing the points by the maximum number of points gives us a percentage of the points obtained between 0 and 1. And then we take the average over this for each topic. So the result of this query will be a table that has the names of the exercise topics, the homework topics, and for each topic the average percent obtained as points on this topic. The second query is almost the same, but here we have an additional attribute in the group by, namely instead of just having the topic, we also have e dot number. So now we are forming the groups, not only by topic, but we are putting rows only together in the same group if they also have the same exercise number. So in how far is this different from the first query? If we have exercises, multiple homework exercises that have the same topic, so let's say homework 2 has topic SQL, homework 3 also has topic SQL, then in the first query all the results with topic SQL, so all the results for homework 2 and 3 would be put in the same group. Whereas in the second query, we would distinguish these homework exercises. We would distinguish homework 2 from homework 3, although they have the same topic. So in the second query, the homework SQL would appear, the topic SQL would appear twice in the output, first with the average for homework 2 and then with the average for homework 3. So these queries are not equivalent. There is a difference if we have homework exercises with the same topic. Aggregations may not be used in the where clause. The where clause only refers to a single row. However, if we are using group by, then we are partitioning our table into groups and it makes sense to filter out groups based on some aggregated property. This can be done in SQL using the having clause. So the structure of our SQL queries is now as follows. We are having the usual select from where. After the where has been evaluated, the group by is evaluated. So then the rows are partitioned into groups based on the group by attributes. And then the having clause is evaluated, where we now 
are allowed to use aggregation functions and based on some properties of these aggregated values, we can drop entire groups. So for instance, here we say that we want to uh, only keep those groups that have at least n plus one rows. So more than n rows. So all groups that have less or equal to n rows are dropped. The having clause is very similar to the where clause, but the where clause applies to single rows. The having clause applies to entire groups. So in the where clause, we are not allowed to use aggregation functions. In the having clause, we are only allowed to use aggregation functions. So in the having clause, we are not allowed to refer to attributes of the rows other than aggregated properties. Let's try to formulate the following query. We want all the students that got at least 18 points on the homework assignments. Okay, we want to have all the students with at least 18 points on the homework. So we need to query the students table and the results table. We need to have a join condition. And the join condition, of course, is that the sit, the student ID has to match. Okay. So for first approximation, let's select the first name, the last name, and the points obtained on this exercise. Good. Now we have a table with first and last names and the points obtained on each exercise. We only want to see the homework exercises. Now we have a table that contains the homework results for each student, but we haven't aggregated anything yet. We want to aggregate for each student. So we should partition the table into groups for each student. So we should group by the student. So we could group by first and last name. But first and last name, of course, does not uniquely identify the student. If we have two students with the same first or last name, then we, they would be put in the same group. That's not what we want. So let's group by the student ID. Now, only grouping by student ID also doesn't work because we still want the first and the last name in the output, but we are allowed to only use group by attributes in the output. So we have to also include the first and the last such that we can include it in the select. It will not change the group by because the sit uniquely determines the first and the last name. If I tell you a student ID, you know exactly what the first and the last name of the student is. But including first and last here allows us to also have first and last in the select clause. The points are no longer correct because we don't want the points of particular exercise. We now want to have the sum of the points. So let's write sum here. Okay, now we have a table with the first and the last name of the students and the sum of the points that they have obtained on their homework exercises. So this is still not what we wanted with our query. We didn't want to have a list with the sum of the points, we wanted to have the names of the students that have at least 18 points. So now we are going to use the having clause to drop entire groups. We want to drop the group that belongs to Lisa Simpson. She has only five points in total. So we now say that we want to drop those groups where the sum of the points is smaller than, uh, we want to keep the groups where the sum is greater or equal 18. We want to drop all of the groups where the sum is smaller. Execute this query again. And now we have all the names of the students that have really obtained at least 18 points on the homework. 
So in the having clause, we specify a condition that all the groups have to fulfill. Groups that do not meet this condition are dropped. And we are only allowed to use aggregation functions and not allowed to directly refer to attribute values. The query on this slide is wrong because here we have a reference to simple attribute values in the having clause. So we are trying to filter here the rows in the having clause. And this is of course not what we should do if we want to have such a condition that the sit of S has to match the sit of R, then we should include this condition in the where clause. So the correct query is that we include this condition in the where clause and in the having clause we only have aggregation functions.